Welcome into another video in my series where we're going through and testing all the weapons inside of Modern Warfare 3 to see how viable these weapons are for us to be using inside of our Zombies game mode. This is going to include the aftermarket parts, the aftermarket conversion kits, as well as the MW2 weapons. So if you're new around here and you like to see how weapons perform inside of Call of Duty Zombies, you are in the right place. So make sure you are subscribed with those bell notifications turned on so you're not going to miss out any future uploads from myself. As well, down below in the description, you will find the link for my streams. I stream on Mondays and Thursdays. 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I stream everything from MW3 Zombies, the Black Ops 6 Beta, all the way through to Custom Zombies, and I have a ton of fun over there doing that. I would love to see you all come and hang out. As well, before we dive into anything review related today, I wanted to get to our third um, giveaway of a standard edition of Black Ops 6 on any platform. Now, yesterday I announced our brand new winner, and just last night I was able to get in touch with the winner announced yesterday, and they have let me know that they have already pre-ordered the game and they'd like me to move on and pick another winner. So today I'm gonna be picking a brand new winner for our third standard edition of Black Ops 6 on any platform of your choice. And congratulations goes to, I hope I say this right, Ikari Igneous. Uh, you are the winner of the Black Ops 6 Standard Edition on any platform. So make sure you join the Z Horde Community Discord. The link for that is down in the description below. And uh, get in touch with me through a DM once you've joined the Discord. And uh, we can get you sorted for your Standard Edition of Black Ops 6. Congratulations again. And I'm super thankful to be able to do this because of the support you have all been showing me on the channel, which is true truly unbelievable. As well, before we dive into anything review related today, I wanted to pass along a little milestone that I received um, in an email from YouTube to let me know that my channel has crossed over 700 uploads on the channel, which I didn't even know I was near that uh, number. So pretty remarkable and uh, just goes to show you got lots of content coming from me going forward. Now in today's video, we're gonna be diving in to um, an SMG that I covered just two days ago, the AMR9. And we did the double barrel aftermarket conversion kit on the AMR9. And in the comments section, somebody had mentioned that they use the Jack Atlas aftermarket conversion kit for the AMR9, which turns it into a five round burst. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the SMG, the AMR9 with the Jack Atlas aftermarket conversion kit. We're going to be taking that through all three tiers, taking on bounty contracts all the way through. So hopefully by the end of today's video, you have a really good feel for this Jack Atlas aftermarket conversion kit, how it performs inside of our zombies game mode. And by the end of the video, you should be able to make up your mind on whether or not this aftermarket conversion kit for the AMR9 is going to be a viable option for you to be running inside of your zombies games. So without further ado, let's dive into the AMR9 Jack Atlas aftermarket conversion kit review video today. Welcome into today's video. Thank you so very much for tuning in today. I truly do appreciate that. Now in today's video, I just recently covered uh, the uh, double barrel aftermarket conversion kit for the AMR9. And in the comment section, someone had mentioned to try out the burst aftermarket conversion kit, the Jack Atlas for the AMR9. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. So if you're new to the channel around here, when I spawn in and I do my weapon testing videos, we spawn in and put on all of our perks and no additions to the weapon whatsoever, aside from running Deadshot Daiquiri as a mouse and keyboard player, as I like the extra critical damage that it does provide and then we go off and grab our first bounty contract of the day and we go and take this bounty contract on at white rarity and uh, so we went and grabbed our bounty and what do we have to fight today to start our video we have a mangler so let's go off and see how this um amr amr 9 conversion kit performs against our first bounty contract of the day and we're going to be taking this on white rarity so no absolutely no additions to the weapon no pack-a-punch no tools no ammo mods nothing now i was impressed um you can tell when you're able to hit all five of the bursts for critical shots you can dish out an absolute boatload of damage to a bounty contract inside the tier one only being white rarity i mean this is pretty impressive I was already knowing that the AMR9 is going to be a pretty solid weapon to use for sure. So um, seeing the suggestion to run the aftermarket conversion kit that turned it into a burst rifle, I thought would be uh, definitely an awesome choice. And thank you so much for the suggestion. I really do appreciate that. Tons of fun. And I really enjoy doing weapon suggestions videos. It's one of my favorite things to do. Now, next on the list, seeing how it performed, uh, I was kind of eager to head off to Pack-A-Punch and increase the damage output on this uh, SMG once. 
Now, if you're new to MW3 and you want to keep your camo or your blueprint on your gun, visit Pack-A-Punch before you use a uh, pop crystal or the Pack-A-Punch machine and then melee it. Uh, make sure it turns green and then go ahead and use the pack machine or your pop crystals and you'll keep your camo on your weapon for the rest of the run. So now that we have increased the damage output on this SMG, I wanted to make sure uh, we went off and picked up our second bounty contract of the day inside of tier one. And we got a second mangler and I could already tell the critical damage output just by visiting Pack-A-Bunch was an absolute substantial increase. And I was thoroughly impressed with just how strong this hits when you get the all the bursts to hit the critical like just absolutely amazing i was feeling super confident using this in that we're only white rarity and only pack a bunch inside of tier one so at this point it was time for some fun so i threw on the legendary tool my ammo mod and we're going to go off and uh, find our third and final bounty contract of the day inside of tier one and we're going to go see just how fast we can delete this bounty contract being about as strong as uh, you know you possibly could need to be inside a tier one being legendary with an ammo mod and pack a punched on my weapon inside a tier one at this you know damage output you are incredibly old p for uh tier one so i like doing these bounty contracts there's a ton of fun to see just how quickly i can get rid of uh the bounties now i wanted to use that vehicle so i had to back off my fire because i didn't want to destroy the vehicle but i mean you can see this mango had no chance i'm just casually walking backward just tap and burst and watching his health just evaporate so that was awesome at this point i wanted to push through into tier two kind of as quick as i could and grab a bounty contract and keep this uh, smg's damage output where it was um seeing you know how well it had performed across all of our bounty contracts inside of tier one um, I didn't feel like there was going to be a real need to, you know, rush into pack two to make this a viable option inside of tier two. We got a disciple, which I am just not the biggest fan of. And it's only because of the way they move, uh, the zombies that they beef up, their, their healing ability, able to siphon health off of you. They're not challenging really to, you know, take out. It's just the movement's really annoying and constantly having to break the healing is just a real pain in the butt. And this one was taking forever to, you know, cooperate and without spawning. There was just so much. Every time I went to shoot the disciple here, there was him doing this. Or I was getting whacked from behind right there by a zombie that managed to magically appear out of nowhere. Because I thought I'd cleared out all of the riffraff. Um, which is, again, why I'm not a big fan of disciples. But you can see how quick it is. You know, one one shot like one burst and you can stop the healing effect from the disciple which is awesome i definitely don't want to be pumping tons of rounds into the disciple's hand to stop him from healing himself so that definitely was good to see and uh you know bodes well for this as we progress forward and increase the damage output on this weapon so seeing you know how we took out that disciple pretty much with ease aside from you know it moving around i wanted to go and visit pack a punch tier two increase the damage output again on this smg and grab our second bounty contract and our final one inside of tier two and see just how strong is this you know we are pretty strong now for tier two we're pack a punch level two we have a legendary tool on the weapon and we're running shatter blast so we are definitely very strong and can handle the zombies the traffic the you know inside of tier two without an issue at all um so i was kind of intrigued to see how it would work against a uh, disciple we got another one yay and this location here can be one of the most annoying disciple locations to deal with because um, I usually end up coming to this location where I'm underneath the bridge and I've had the disciple um, engage with me underneath the bridge and then shoot back up the top like he, he just did here but did the opposite. He engaged and then shot right down to the ground. And then I went down to the ground and he went back up to the top. I tell you, disciples drive me absolutely nuts. But you can see just how viable this is being packed two inside of tier two taking on that disciple no struggles whatsoever so now i wanted to get into tier three and uh keep the damage output where it was seeing how we have been performing across you know uh the tier one tier two i wanted to jump into tier three grab the rest of my perks and see what this uh, smg can do inside of tier three being only pack a punch two legendary with enamel mod before we you know jump on and show max damage output on this weapon and don't forget we still have mags of holding uh to use to show this weapon at max damage output and with mags of holding so that you don't have to worry about the reloading now i mention this because 
This aftermarket conversion kit comes with a 30 round magazine. So when you pack a punch it, you're gonna have 60 rounds. Um, and I just felt like I was doing an awful lot of reloading with this aftermarket conversion kit. The damage is there for sure. So if you have mags of holding to use, um, I would recommend using it on this weapon as you don't need, it is a burst fire, but you can just hold down trigger and just continually, you know, shoot away. So that is awesome. So mags of holding would definitely work. Um, and help with the mag size issue that I was finding. Um, I mean, 60 is not bad. It, it's not horrible. Um, it's just, there's a lot of frequently reloading that is needed. So we went and grabbed a bounty contract, um, hoping for a mega abomination, but I didn't get one. So I got a mimic. But the next thing I wanted to show you before we took on the bounty contract was just how well does this um, aftermarket conversion kit on the AMR9 handle uh, crowd control inside of tier 3. So I rounded up an absolute massive horde of zombies inside of tier 3. You can see at the ADS it's just melting everything at the end of the barrel. In tack stance the exact same thing meant melting absolutely everything at the at end of the barrel which is just absolutely amazing to see. Hip fire much the same. You do have uh, the additional movement speed of course and you've got hip fire which is nice to see. But um, this isn't a fast uh, build. Like this isn't built for uh, movement. This is slightly geared towards uh movement but uh the main focus of the build today was the damage output and to try and compensate for a little bit of the bounciness you get from having it being a burst rifle uh or burst fire sorry so it definitely i mean you can see the the, the carnage there from crowd control was real holy smokes and then we went and grabbed our uh bounty contract which was our mimic and he was patiently waiting for us to come over which was nice to see grabbed a uh, dead wire circuit turret board out of that cache uh, which i wanted to use to show you just how amazing these are to use so if you guys are uh you know unsure about coming into tier three you can grab these circuit turret boards um, inside of tier two in loot caches or what have you and uh collect them and then uh, i'll show you what they're used for inside of tier three now the critical damage on our um bounty contract inside of tier three here we are we are melting this mimic you can tell, see the health bar when I'm uh, hitting the critical shots just drop on the Mimic as I'm taking out chunks. The energy mine did a whole bunch of damage for me there. Brought him down to about halfway. I think just under halfway on uh, the Mimic's health bar using the energy mine, which is one of my favorite uh, field upgrades to use when running solo. Um, let me know if you guys are solo players in the comments. What is the field upgrade of your choice that you run and uh, the ammo mod that you use? I'm curious to find out what everybody who plays solo, what they're running. For me, it's energy mine um, is the field upgrade and shatter blast is the ammo mod. Finished off our bounty contract inside a tier three here, pretty much with ease taking it. Um, Dishing out a ton of damage with this uh, aftermarket conversion kit for the AMR9, I was I was really impressed. So I had to go over and visit George, the Guardian of the Arches. And today I was like, "Hey George, you remember our double barrel weapon? I got a new version of it. I want to show you. It shoots five bullets once I pull the trigger. Five of them. It's a burst weapon. It's really cool, George. He he didn't seem to care. Um, all he wanted to do was laser attack me." We managed to take off a head right there as I dropped down from the top, which was awesome. Now, George was definitely hunting me down today. He was in an aggressive mood. I don't think he's uh, pleased with the fact that uh, maybe he's not getting any of uh, the royalties for these videos. And he is, you know, the main focus of our testing inside of Tier 3. So he's in a cranky mood right now. Poor George. It's okay, my friend. Uh, we will see you again in Black Ops 6 Zombies. I can't not wait for uh, Black Ops 6 to drop and to just put out an absolute boatload of content on Black Ops 6 with the zombies weapon reviews, um, guides for you all to do Easter eggs, side Easter eggs and what have you. So it's gonna be a ton of fun. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I'd love to hear from you all what mode and uh, if it's zombies, what zombies map you are going to be playing first on release. Um, whether it's going to be Terminus or is it going to be Liberty Falls? So let me know that in the comments section. I'd love to know. I still haven't made up my mind. Um, I'm intrigued to see both. I'm convinced there's more to both maps than what we saw in the early gameplay. And so uh, I'm really excited just to have two maps to dive into on release. There's going to be just so much stuff to cover. It's going to be amazing. Now you can see how well this aftermarket, the Jack Atlas conversion kit on the AMR9 handles 
our Mega Abomination inside of Tier 3, the crowd control, the congestion that can happen while you're taking on a bounty contract inside of Tier 3 was definitely not much of an issue. Like, I was feeling really confident using this weapon, and we finished off uh, George. I tried to <laughs> box George to death because I knew he was almost out of health, but we had a player in the area, and he managed to come in and finish off George for us. <laughs> so I almost died right here. I had to take off running. I can only imagine what that must have looked like. I would have been laughing my head off going like, what is this player doing? Why are you boxing a Mega Abomination inside a Tier 3? Like, that is not going to work out. <laughs> Check the loot that George dropped, which wasn't the greatest. So now I wanted to show you um, what these circuit turret boards are used for and just how incredibly strong they are and how much they can help you out inside of tier three or for that matter anywhere you would find a circuit turret to put your circuit turret board into. Now you can see over here we have a mega abomination bounty contract. You can see on the TAC map we just below that we've got 10 seconds to go or so before the storm starts to move. So I kind of want to get this bounty contract complete in a hurry. So we put the circuit turret um, into the circuit turret, uh, the circuit turret board, sorry, into the circuit turret, and you can see just how much damage it is doing to our Mega Abomination bounty contract. Like it is absolutely crazy. These things are so incredibly overpowered; it's ridiculous. I managed to run away, activate my energy mine, and you can see our Mega Abomination gets finished right there. Already done. Um, it was just a matter of seconds. And it will con uh, deal with all the crowd control in the area for you as it just absolutely shreds anything that comes to you. Um, a nice little trick too when you have your circuit turret operating. If you have a weapon out, the weapon that is in your hands will be getting XP from the circuit turret kills. Um, so that is just absolutely amazing if you're looking to up, uh, level up a weapon, you can do that. But overall... I would have to say that this uh, aftermarket, the Jack Atlas conversion kit for the AMR9 is definitely a viable option. It hits incredibly hard. Um, the only downsides um, that I noticed for myself was just the magazine size. So pre pack a punched you're looking at 30 rounds in your magazine. And then after pack a punched you're looking at 60 rounds. That was about the only downside I noticed uh, with this weapon. Um, so if you have mags of holding, my recommendation is to bring one in. If you want to use the Jack Atlas aftermarket conversion kit, it's not needed, but it's definitely something that will help and uh, you know stop you from having to reload just so frequently, uh, which is awesome because that's something I felt in this game 100%. Now at the end of every video, like I always do, this is the build um, that I was using for today's run. So if you feel like you want to make any changes to the build, maybe uh, move it towards movement and speed or move it towards, you know, more uh, recoil control and damage output, let's work together down in the comments section so that we all have one amazing build to use on this AMR9 Jack Atlas Aftermarket Conversion Kit. This is the Aftermarket Conversion Kit, its pros and cons and what it does to the weapon. The camo that I was using is the one trick camo found under the weapon prestige. I got a little bit lost here trying to find it. <laughs> but yeah, it's under the weapons prestige. It's the uh, one trick camo I was using. And as always, I uh, got you guys covered. I will show you the blueprint that I was running for the AMR9. And uh, it is a black cell variant. I could not be happier with the growth on the channel. Thank you all so very much. It has been a ton, an absolute boatload of fun to get into some games with everybody inside of the Z Horde community and help everybody out. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next one.